correct track here. So let me draw this out here. So you've got a pendulum. This is a regular pendulum. I know it's not the same thing, but it, it swings yeah. back and forth. And it just swings back and forth here. It's a pendulum going back and forth. For this, the period of motion is uh, 2 pi square root of L over G. Is that the correct? They're going to get the G and the L mixed yeah. up. Is it this? Okay. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, and you're going to use this exact same equation for this situation where you've got the ground and a balloon that's swinging back and forth going like this. The only difference is you don't use G here because it's being pulled up, not down. And so your guess, yeah. which is almost right, your guess was find the force of buoyancy. Yeah. That's almost right, it's not quite right. Let me show you why. <clears throat> On this one here, you've got tension pulling it up and force of gravity pulling it down. Yeah. On this one here, what are your forces? Um, buoyancy up and tension down, right? Close, one more. Um, gravity down too, right now? Exactly. So this one has a third force involved. So over here, we can find, I know you don't have to find gravity because we just know it's 9.8, but we could have found gravity by doing everything but tension and dividing both sides by M. That'll tell us gravity, okay? And it would be 9.8. Okay. We don't have the mass of the balloon either. Well, well, we'll get there, so hold on a second. So what we want to do here is we're going to do the same thing here. We want to do everything except the tension. So we're going to do force of buoyancy minus force of gravity divided by mass. That's going to be our, I'm going to call it GE, effective gravity. How about, how about EFF? Effective gravity. Okay, so it's, okay. it's the, it would be the acceleration of this balloon if you snip the string. Okay? Okay, now yeah. with that given, let's find that uh, force of buoyancy minus force of gravity divided by mass. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> What's the equation for force of buoyancy? Give me a second. I have her down. Um, density of the fluid minus, no, density of the fluid times volume of the object times G. Okay. And we can't find volume of the object because there's no there's no radius. Right. Oh, okay, so let's let's go ahead and write that in. What's the volume of the object? Assume it's a, assume it's a sphere. Um, four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, times g minus mass of the balloon times g divided by mass of the balloon. Okay, so now, uh, what's the fluid that we put here? Air, right? Yes. And what's that density? Um, 1.29. Yes. Uh, and is that given in this problem? Do I have to know that from the test? You don't need to know that from the test. It's either given in this problem or it's given in one of the other problems. I don't remember for sure. It's given on this one. Is it given on this one? Okay. The density of air would be 1.29. Okay. At least on mine, that's what yeah, that's on part B is given. Okay, so we can plug in a 1.29 right here. Now, here's my next question. How are you going to find the mass of this balloon? You don't. I don't, I don't think you can. Well, I don't know. What would be the equation we would use? Yeah, we'd use, um, we'd use the density equation, right? We'd say... Density, that would be density times volume. Density is mass over volume, so we can find mass by doing density times volume, right? And in this case, it's going to be the density yeah. of the stuff inside the balloon, which is the helium, and it gives you that density, right? 
Okay, so here I'm yeah. gonna write density of helium times four thirds pi r cubed, and here I'm gonna write density of helium times four thirds pi r cubed. Oops, I wrote a square there. I said cubed. Okay, now. And those can cancel each other out, right? Yeah, look at that. There's a fourth. There's a four thirds pi r cubed in every single term. All of them go away. So we don't need to know the size of the balloon. Oh, except you keep. The All density. right, let me just. The density of helium has to stay. Okay, so now what we're left with here is uh, density of air. That's your one point two nine times g minus density of helium here times g divided by density of helium. And that will be the effect of gravity. <laughs>